at least got a little bit of time to go ahead and attempt. But um, again, guys, and the main important thing is, if these are going to be continuous, that means the y values are going to be equal to each other. So we're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, well, you know, both of these again are equal to, could be y equations, I do y. So rather than set y equal to y, we're going to set what y is equal to, equal to each other. And then we want to see, well, if they're going to be discontinuous, they're going to be discontinuous at x equals negative 1. So I want to find what, that, what y value is going to make them continuous when x equals negative 1. So all I need to do then is just replace there. Negative 1 squared is going to be 1, so that's going to be times 2 equals negative 1 plus c plus 1 plus 1. 3 equals c. So you guys can see that x is going to be equal to, um, or when x is equal to 3. And again, if you wanted to graph that, let's just go and graph this real quick. x squared when x is um, less than negative 1. So let's say a vertical stretch. Let's plug in a negative 1. Um, so that 4 is going to be 2. Right? And then if you guys were to graph this at x equals 3, you go to the y-intercept 3, slope is 1 over 1, so it'd be down 1 over 1. Right? Yes? But then, again, it's only for x values that are less than negative 1, so that would be contained. So it'd be like a slope in there. But you guys can see how that kind of works. Yes? No? Maybe? A little bit? Not so many OK. So now let's go and have, let's finish up my last example.